classes, welcome to Docs 101, the show where we show you how to get your basic documentation in Mexico. My name is Esme, and this is your favorite channel, De Aquí y De Allá. In our last episode, we discussed how to get your credencial para votar, aka your INE. If you want to figure out how to do this, check out the link below. This week, we're covering the Constancia de Recepción de Repatriados Mexicanos, aka La Hoja de Repatriación. Stay tuned! Hola amigo. Clemente, ¿cómo estás hermano? Mucho tiempo sin verte. Oye, Sebas, te, te tengo una pregunta. ¿Qué pasó hermano? Ah, vengo de la oficina de acá de inmigración. Este... Oye, si ¿sí, a ti cuánto tiempo te queda en tu carta de repatriación? ¿Carta de repatriación? ¿Ah, chingado? Pues, ¿Qué es eso? ¿Cómo? ¿Dónde la conseguiste o qué? Sí, este, una de estas, no sé si la has visto. ¿Carta de repatriación? No, pues... No, no, esto no me lo dieron a mí. Pues ¿Dónde lo conseguiste? ¿Cómo? A mí me la dieron al llegar a México después de ser deportado. ¿Deportado? Con razón, pues como yo llegué de retornado, a lo mejor por eso no me la dieron. Yo creo que sí, ¿verdad? Maybe Professor Lewis can help us out. Hello there. Hi, Esme. The Constancia de Repatriación, or Proof of Repatriation, is a sheet of paper with a blurry picture of a deportee and an identification number. This paper serves as a temporary form of ID and is granted by the Instituto Nacional de Migración. It is also used to provide deportees with support services through a now defunct program called Somos Mexicanos. Yeah, Somos Mexicanos never work. To learn more about that program, click in the link below. This paper, however, is only given at the 11 border points of repatriation. If you did not go through an administrative removal process, you do not get a constancia de repatriación. Yes, the immigration laws are a purely administrative matter, not a criminal one. However, the way migrants are treated does not always reflect that. Like I mentioned, the hoja de repatriación is a form of ID, but it is not an official one, despite being issued by a federal authority. The sheet of paper is not accepted to open a bank account or go to the INE to obtain an official credential at the federal level. However, as Mexico City attempts to be a sanctuary city, the Constancia carries more weight here and is considered an official identification according to the fifth article of the Acuerdo por el que se declara a la Ciudad de México una ciudad santuario, published in the Gaceta Oficial de la Federación the 6th of April of 2017. In theory, the Constancia de Repatriación allows deportees to access the support offered then by the Somos Mexicanos program and now through the Instituto, Instituto Nacional de Migración, such as access to shelters on the border, the ability to receive money orders, and transportation to other cities in the country when they first arrive. Pero ojo, la Constancia also expires six months after being issued, which means any additional reintegration support services also expire within that time. Most deportees are not aware of these services and their quick expiration dates. There were many faults with the Somos Mexicanos program, the first being that it only supports deportees who enter the country through, through an official port of entry. Also, the Constancia is often lost or stolen from deportees, which then makes it difficult if not impossible to access support. Children and spouses who follow the deported family members who enter to a, through a different port of entry, or those who return 
are not eligible for support. The little support that exists anyway. Here's hoping the replacement for Somos Mexicanos is more inclusive of the migrant community. Ugh, kind of heartbreaking, but very informative. Thank you, Professor Luli. Hasta luego, Esme. Why did Biden get my carta or I lost it? What am I going to do? If for some reason you don't have your hoja de repatriación, you can go to an INAMI office and they can give you a replacement. If you have another kind of ID, it could help you to get it. But if you don't, you would need to show up so that they can match your picture with the one in the OHA. The information you would need to provide is your full name, the date of the deportation, and the place of entry. If for some reason you gave a different name when you were deported, you can also use your alien ID number to look for your OHA. In any event, you would need to do this procedure personally since the hoja de repatriación would not be given to a third party. It has to be you. I'll also add, like to add that even though the hoja de repatriación has a vigencia of six months, you should still go ask the authorities in your place of residence because you might still be eligible for some programs that exist para las personas repatriadas. If you're in Mexico City, the INAMI office you should attend is in Polanco. We'll put the address right here. On a side note, El INAMI de Polanco is rather inaccessible through public transportation, so you're gonna have to walk for a bit. If you're not in Mexico City, you can always call the INAMI hotline to find the nearest office. We'll put the number right here. If after all this, you still cannot get your hoja de repatriación and you absolutely need it to access services, then make sure to come by to Oda and a member of the Team Acompañamiento will help you out. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact Oda. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, stay awesome possums.